I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this CCNA 5-Minute Practice Exam, where today we're going to be mixing the topics up for you a little bit, and the format of the exams remains the same. We're going to be presenting with five questions, most short answer, not very many multiple choice here, but maybe a few. And as always, we're going to go through the questions fairly quickly. And so if you need to pause the video for a moment, feel free to. And then we'll look at the answers and explanations on live Cisco equipment. I won't just give you the answer. I'm going to show you exactly how we arrived at it. Here, let's start with questions one and two on the same board today because I want to draw a clear line between these two values for you. First, I want you to tell me exactly what the 100 in the command router OSPF 100 stands for and then exactly what the 50 in router EIGRP 50 represents. Question three, a standard ACL can be used to match one and only one particular value of a packet. What value is that? Question four, what is the escape sequence for a trace route that you'd really like to stop running? And that happens to all of us, so this is a good sequence to know. And then finally, our fifth question, what exact command would create a NAT range of addresses to be a sign that contains the four addresses I have there on the board. And I've got the name for you there as well. The NAT commands tend to be pretty long, so we'll be using iOS help along the way with that one. So let us bring up those first questions, one and two. What exactly do, do these numbers stand for? Let's find out on the live equipment. That's why we have OSPF help. With OSPF, or iOS help. With OSPF we've got a process ID. This is a locally significant number only. It's not going to be advertised to downstream routers. Where with EIGRP this is an autonomous system number and not only will that number be advertised to a potential neighbor, they have to agree on it to actually become neighbors. So while the potential range, as you, as you can see, is exactly the same, the meaning of that number is totally different. Question three, what can a standard ACL use to be, to, for matching? Let's take a look and we'll stay in this config mode. And we'll run a deny here. And you'll notice we don't get very many options here. When we try to run an extended ACL, we get a lot of options because the only thing you can use uh, to match on with a standard ACL is a source IP address of the packet. That's it. You can't get into port numbers and that kind of thing. You've got to use an extended list for that. Let's move on to question four. What is that escape sequence? Let's run a trace route here then to an address this router can't reach because it'll take a second for it to even start showing up. And I love this, and you probably noticed this before too, maybe with pings, type escape sequence to abort, but there's no mention of what the escape sequence is. And it's very easy when you're running a trace route to mistype one number, and then you're trying to trace route somewhere that your router can't even begin to get to, and that's what's happening here. So what happens is, you're going to get literally 30 rows of these asterisks. And these indicate, you know, hey, I can't find a route to this at all. When, it, when you see asterisks on line number one, you know that you've mistyped an address or you just have no way to even begin getting to that destination. So you better know how to terminate this. And it's Control Shift 6, Control Shift 6, one right after the other. Once you practice it a few times, it's the same one that terminates a ping and it'll just stop it right then and there so you don't have to watch 30 rows of asterisks go by which can be embarrassing especially if somebody's behind you asking is it supposed to be doing that uh, finally question five let's take a look at this because the nat pool commands or the nat commands period tend to get long-winded but especially the nat pool command it's going to begin with ip nat pool and then you need to give it a name because another part of the nat configuration is going to refer to this so we'll call it exam success. And then you put in your start IP address of the range, which here was 172.111, and then your end address. So this would mean that all of your addresses from dot one to dot four here, which is what we had here in the question, would actually be put into the pool. 
it's not just that those two uh, addresses the only two in the poll. Then we would put net mask or prefix length. We'll go ahead and put net mask here and then type the full address out. We'll assume a 24-bit mask. And then that would finally be it. You do have an option for a pull type there, but anytime you see the CR there, you know this is a legal command. So it's a long command, but there it is. IP NAT pulled and the name, beginning of the range, end of the range, the word net mask, if that's the way you choose to configure it, and then the mask itself. And that's it. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch this video. I truly appreciate it. Just want to invite you out to the website, thebryantadvantage.com. Hundreds of practice exams, tutorials, and lots of other great features to help you earn your Cisco, Microsoft, and Network Plus 2009 certifications. And also, if you're watching this on YouTube, we've got our certification channel out there and plenty of free videos out there for you to watch as well. Thanks again for your time, and I'll see you on the next practice exam. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933.